Welcome to modern Qt development with software containers for devices. Shortly about me, my name is Stefan Eichenberger and I work as field application engineer for Toratex. I have an embedded background, that means I worked with a lot of embedded processors like Cortex-M4s and Cortex-A. And uh, in my previous job, I also worked a little bit uh, with Qt. That's why I have some Qt experience. However, I'm not a Qt expert. This talk is about containers and how you develop with them. Um, my colleague Walter always introduces containers with real world containers for people who are not familiar with them. Um, containers are boxes. Uh, used to ship goods from one country to another and it's a standardized way on how you can pack stuff. So it doesn't depend if you ship rice or cars, it's always the same box and the same size. Another good thing about containers is that it isolates uh, the content of one container from the content of another con container so that the, the the, the, the stuff inside the corner does not mix together. The same thing is with software containers. So uh, software containers are a way to pack different software, different libraries together and then ship them to customers or to other platforms somewhere remote. And another feature from containers are they are also uh, useful to isolate software from each other. So if you run a container, uh, a, an application in container one in this image and another application, let's say a web server, container two, then container, the application running in container one cannot access the one in container two if you don't want to have that. If you want to allow this access, you can do that, but then you have to put holes into the the container itself. There are several container technologies available today. One of the most famous one is probably Docker. Docker is uh, heavily using containers and pushing them. Uh, there is to the, their main system is Docker Hub and it's basically what I will talk about today a lot. However, there are others, uh, other technologies there, like LXD, LXE, uh, which is even a bit older than Docker, and then Podman, which is kind of a try to replace Docker um, and is developed by Red Hat. <clears throat> if you are a desktop application developer, you maybe are more interested in packaging system more than in real container systems. So these packaging systems I list here, like Snappy and Flatpak, they also kind of use um, container technology to just pack software together. What that means is you can select a base operating system like uh, Ubuntu 18.04 and then develop your application on top of that. And if you ship that to a Fedora Linux, it will still use the root file system of the Ubuntu system. And for that, you can use Snappy, uh, Flatpak, and so on. It makes your application independent of the base system. Um, what is the difference between a traditional uh, approach when you develop or uh, write uh, an application compared to the container approach? Um, the, the, the traditional approach just runs an application on top of the host system. So it uses the same libraries, it uses the same um, mount points and so on as the host system. That also means if you start, if, if the application starts, it will inherit the C groups and namespaces of the calling uh, application. You can of course change that but by default it will just inherit. So that means you kind of um, have, have not a security issue, but it is by default, it will not make your application run in a safe mode. And compared to containers, when you run a 
an application inside a container, then the container will use the root file system of the container system. So you can pack in their other stuff and you can even use other uh, operating system then on the host system. So if you run the, on the host system, let's say uh, an embedded distro, you can run in the container uh, a real big desktop uh, distribution like Ubuntu. The other thing that is nice, and that's the isolation, isolation part that I was talking about in, in the previous slides. You, by default, if you start a container, it will start this container in a different namespace and it will uh, start it with different C groups so that you have kind of an isolation so that the container, for example, doesn't see the processes of the host system. And of course, it also uses other mount points because it even needs a different root file system. So if you do an LS uh, root, then you would just see the, the content of your container root file system and not the one of your host system. What does this mean if you want to develop now with containers? So normally you have the setup if you develop with devices. Um, you have a developer PC and uh, target device, an embedded system in this case, but this could also be a server if you are developing for a server infrastructure. Um, on the developer PC, you run Qt Creator in this example, and Qt Creator is, then needs some tools to, for debugging to start the application on the remote system. And what, what is necessary is, for example, SSH to control the device, and then also GDB for debugging. And some other tools are rsync to synchronize the files between the host and the target system. The problem with Qt Creator today is that it doesn't allow to um, run container, containers directly. So what you normally need to do now is to write some wrapper script which basically abstract the underlying uh, commands. So if you run qmake, it will not directly call qmake, but instead will spawn a container, which includes qmake, and then call the qmake inside the container. The container part is this, is this yellow part here. On the target, then you also run a container, which, as I said before, includes GDB server, SSHD, and all the Qt libraries where you link against. So how does this look like if we have a closer look on, the, on both containers? So the development container, in our case, runs on an AMD64 machine. And we want to compile for a target platform, which is ARM HF based. <coughs> what we want to do is we want to cross compile. Because cross compiling is much faster than if we would just um, do an emulated compilation. We could do that as well. So here I separated blue and green. The green parts are basically AMD64 programs. The blue parts are ARM HF uh, programs or libraries. Um, the nice thing about Debian, which we use in this example, is that you have multi-arch support. So that means you can install uh, our AMD64 libraries parallel to ARM HF libraries. And then you can compile with a cross compiler for ARM HF by just linking against the ARM HF libraries instead of the AMD64 libraries. The QMake is a little bit special in this uh, example. You have to run the ARM HF QMake even on the AMD64 machine because else it would generate make files for AMD64, which doesn't work. However, the nice thing about newer distributions is if you run, if you just want to execute a norm, um, a norm binary, it will automatically detect, the kernel will automatically detect that and then launch it in with support, uh, QEMU support, so it will emulate that binary. That's possible thanks to bin FMT. On the 
target, you just install your Qt package, the Qt libraries, and then for debugging as well, open SSH server, or sync and GDB server. But that will all run natively on ARM HF. Okay, I was talking before about wrappers, so we cannot, because Qt Creator is not aware of any containers, we cannot just tell Qt Creator to use a certain container to compile uh, an application. Instead, we have to write a wrapper which then abstracts the whole uh, container, container handling. And here is an example for make. Instead of just calling make, we spawn a container with docker run and then inside the container will execute the real make and then it will just for Qt Creator be transparent. It doesn't care if it's really in the container or not. Um, I, we documented that. Um, I put some links in there. There is also a really nice um, tutorial for CMake, which uh, works almost the same as, as these examples from Burkhard Stubert um, at embeddeduse.com. So you can also have a look there. But then it's for CMake and not for QMake. Okay, then we can already step into the demo. I made a short demo on an Apalis IMX6 processor um, running on top of Horizon Core, which is the operating system we are currently developing, which already includes a Docker engine. So the first thing we need to do is we now need to start Weston. Weston is a compositor which then displays the Qt application. We fetch this a Western container from our Horizon feed from Docker Hub. And we can see now Docker is running on the, on the target system. The second screen was basically already on the, running on the target. If we check all processes on the host system, we can see that we see all processes. So we see also stuff that is running inside the container plus everything that runs on the host system. If we now start a uh, Qt develop the target container. Then we need to do some port forwarding for SSH and the GDB server, as well as we have to set some C groups so that we can access the G, uh, GPU. Now, if we run PS again inside a container, then we will see that we cannot see the host processes. We only see the ones that are inside, uh, spawned inside the, the container. And one of the most important ones for Qt Creator is SSHD, which allows then Qt Creator to connect to the target. So now we are basically ready to set up the Qt Creator. <coughs> for that, we need to define a kit. We call this kit Qt5 Horizon. We select a device, and then we select a GDB multi arc for debugging, and we define a Qt QMake version which is basically our wrapper. So instead of having a real QMake running, we just call a wrapper and this wrapper will then call QMake inside a container. And the point is Q, Q Creator, when calling uh, QMake, will do a query on it, which, which is shown here. And we, we need to prepend this query a sysroot directory so that Qt Creator can access um, header files and so on to do some syntax highlighting and to do uh, syntax checking. So that's just required for QMake. Besides that, we just can run doc a Docker run as shown in the previous slides. And then the device, we have to configure it a little bit special because we do some port forwarding. So we just have to consider that as well when setting up the device. Now that we have configured Qt Creator, we are ready to go. And we can now start a compilation, which takes some time. And if we now call make, for example, then it will not call the real make, it will call the wrapper script. And the wrapper script will spawn a container and call make inside the container. This is basically what happens here now. And you can see it uses now the cross compilation um, ARM HF. Um, GCC or G++ instead of 
uh, native one. Now we are basically done. We have a binary, we compiled the application and now we are ready to, to debug. So we can do that as well. We can debug C++ application as well as QML applications. This is running now. It takes a while because it, has, it, it will call QMake and make again. But that's not, shouldn't take too long. So now we already hit the breakpoint in C++, we can do step over, step into if we want to do that, can continue. And then what we see here is now that it is using Wayland EGL, that's the plugin which is used to communicate with the Western, com Western Compositor, which we see here now. So it uses Wayland EGL to render the, the image or the, yeah, the application, and if we click now on on, then we see we can also debug QML applications. So that's about it from the demo. Um, then we come to a summary. What are the pro and contras of using Qt con uh, or containers in general for development? The nice thing about containers are that you can pack dependencies together. So that's, in, that's nice if you work with embedded devices as well if you work for, uh, on, on desktop machines. You can have different versions of libraries running in different containers. So you can use Qt 5.2 and 5.12 in parallel if you need to do that. You, you have some kind of user space isolation so that an application running in one container cannot necessarily access a, 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 an application in a second container. And you can restrict uh, device access, you can even restrict memory sizes, CPUs, that's all due to C groups. And creating uh, as the case is similar to creating images. So you, if you are familiar with Yocto, it can be quite hard to understand what you do there um, with, with uh, using a container. It's normally just um, using a, a distribution and you write that into a file. The, the negative thing is that you need more space for doing that uh, because you have, of course, more than one root file system available and it's tricky to access uh, some devices because you have to take care about C groups and C group access. And then we don't have the startup dependencies. That means because it no init system is running, you have to take care about launching all applications manually. So DPoS, network manager, and so on, what you need. The other not so nice thing today is that Qt Creator doesn't natively allow container usage, so what you have to do is you have to write this wrapper scripts. However, also my colleague Walter wrote a plugin for Visual Studio code, which you can use to develop with containers, and then it's more a native feeling, and it integrates nicely with the IDE. But not Qt Creator nowadays. Okay, that's it from my side. Thanks a lot for your interest. Um, if you want to check some stuff back, then you can use our developer center or also um, I put the wrapper scripts on GitHub. Um, and now it would be time for questions. <laughs>